Okay, so if you're familiar with the natural log graph, this is what the natural log graph uh, approximately would look like on your page. And if you ask yourself, what does a square root do? Well, it makes the numbers which are, say, 1 and higher, they get smaller. Like 4 goes to 2, 16 goes to 4. So it's going to bring this curve down a little bit like this. It's not going to be drastic, but if you look at it, either curve is going to help you get the answer. So whether uh, you drew it really steep or not so steep, it's still going to help you with the answer. So my graph, if I was to draw this, okay, um, the line x equals e, I don't know, it's somewhere like this. Close enough, though, for my picture. And then the log graph, from what I remember, this is enough to get me started in my picture. Right? It's something like that. So this picture is... Is again, it's approximately close enough that I can get an integral out of it. So the green region is the one I'm looking for. Um, and if you think about it, we already know one of the bounds right here. But what bound is this? Do you remember? Yeah, you have to ask yourself, if 1 is the value, what's the exponent? So, uh, or sorry, if uh, 0 is the exponent here, that means we would have log, natural log would be 1. So that means uh, this bound here, this is uh, x equals to 1. So I've got something to start with now. I'm going from 1 to e. I have to figure out how to do this area. So it says this time I'm still going perpendicular to the x-axis. And we're still dealing with squares. So my picture is going to look something like this. Chop out a square. And this is uh, the height is the natural log of x square root. So for the area of a square, it's going to be root natural log x all squared dx. And... Um, 1 e natural log x dx. Now, um, the natural log, at this point, um, I will tell you that this is a, a question that you do on your calculator. I don't believe this is an AB topic. I believe this is a BC topic. Not that this derivative is hard to memorize. It's not too bad. The antiderivative is uh, x natural log x minus x from 1 to e. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is a BC topic, meaning the course after yours, because the way that you find it is you use a technique that you won't learn until calculus BC. So basically, um, if you remember the, pr uh, I'll just show you real quickly where it comes from. It's not that you can't, you know, understand it, but the technique is a little tougher. Um, for example, if I take two functions, okay, and I um, do the product rule on them, then what I'm going to get is. Uh, I'm going to end up, I'm going to write this in differential notation, so I'll get du times v plus u times dv. So one technique that we do in um, calculus BC is when we integrate, um, this is the derivative, so uh, let's call it derivative on this side. That means if I integrate the whole thing, the integral of a derivative is an easy one to take because it's just going to end up being uv. And of course, usually we would see it like this, but you end up with these pieces. So the technique is usually called integration by pieces or by parts. And uh, it gives me this equation, uv is the integral v du plus u dv, or more commonly seen as this, the integral of u dv is uv minus um, v du. So um, this is what you have to use in order to find out uh, how to do this. And the trick is that you make, uh, let's see here, you make du equal 1. And you pretend that there's a 1 times the natural log. And you make uh, v equal natural log x. So anyways, for those of you who are going to move on to do calculus BC on self-study next year or whatnot, 
Um, this technique is known as integration by parts. It's something you'll have to do later. Okay. But uh, this is, it would give you a different uh, technique to find that antiderivative. For now, I, I'm pretty sure we can just use our calculators on it. Okay, so this is a calculator question. Um, we are now dealing with semicircles. So the shape has changed on you. Hopefully you're comfortable doing squares. See if you can do a semicircle now. Okay, so um, this time, if we take a look, of course, we don't normally deal with a line like this. So if you rearrange this, you're going to get uh, negative 1 half x plus 4. And um, it's roughly going to look something like this if you graph it. And this is the region that we're looking at. And in here, we take a perpendicular to the x-axis, so like this, and a semicircle. So since we're dealing with semicircles, my area function is going to look like this. It's going to be pi r squared over 2. And the total length there, I only want half of the way up. I don't want the whole thing. So the whole way, that whole piece there is equal to one half, negative 1 half x plus 4. So the radius is negative 1 half x plus 4, but we have to divide it by 2. So we'll make it a little friendlier. It would look uh, like this if we get rid of the complex fractions. So that's my radius function. Okay. So if I integrate this, pi over 2 is a constant that I can pull out. Um, it goes from 0 here all the way out to 8. So that's going to be 0 to 8 for my bounds. And it's the radius squared, so it's going to be negative 1 quarter x plus 2 all squared. And again, at this point, we can tell this was a calculator section because of the amount of decimals in there. Otherwise, there'd be a pi in the answer. So it'd be a safe bet to plug this in. I wouldn't bother simplifying it anymore. Your calculator can do the rest. So if we, uh, we've got the integral set up properly, I believe that um, your answer is a 12.566. Yes, Sebastian. Why do we use only two elements? It's not just a equation by um, Because if you look at the picture here, okay, this is what it, uh, the cross section looks like there. My, my worst drawing of this, you get, so that's the semicircle, right? Is that the radius of our line? Well, this whole piece is a diameter. It's all the way across the circle, right? So the whole piece is the diameter, the radius is half the diameter. Does that make sense? What's up? Good? Okay. 